Yeah. Uh, the next talk by my friend and co-author, Ebrahim <laughs> Kalibi, uh, Quantum and Microscope. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, you all. Uh, thanks, uh, Andrew. Thank you, uh, Sal, as well, for, for organizing these events. And of course, uh, thanks to great friend uh, Lev and, and uh, Abtalum. So, uh, uh, it that works, yes, it seems that it works. Fantastic. Well, uh, happy one, 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 one. Yeah, so that's in binary code. And by the way, I checked it's nearly to be 31 years from the day of submission to the, to the journal. So in that 30 years, it's 31 almost. And uh, 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 as you see, that uh, the theory is here is a great pleasure. Also, always listen to, to meet new ideas. And uh, uh, usually, great people are on the shoulder of uh, much greater scientists. So, and uh, you see, uh, in many more interpretation of uh, Lev, Yaki is talking to two different people in two different ways. So interpretation is based on, on what you want to get. So uh, thank you very much uh, um, for uh, for the invitation and also uh, for sharing your thoughts. I mean, great ideas that usually uh, people will get it from the conferences. Uh, eventually, I I wanted to start with a quantum microscopy, but it's, it's John's birthday. So usually at the end of my talk, I have something beyond what I promised. And I start with the beyond because I promised him. So uh, before this, uh, I do a lot of research work in different disciplines. Uh, is um, quantum internet Canada with a lot of great scientists in Canada that we are trying to do uh, secure quantum communication. Uh, different places underwater, uh, free space, uh, fiber networks. And uh, 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 it's not only me, it's many different scientists, I mean, more than 20 scientists that we are trying. On the other side also, I'm doing uh, extreme quantum microscopy, which is uh, 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 an integrated system of photonics and also electronics. Uh, that's the reason that uh, Ben and I also, we collaborated a while ago. Uh, so then uh, with this system, you can build up an, an electron microscope that you can see uh, uh, even atomic scale, but also you can look at the dynamics of atoms, so dynamics of the, of the system in femtosecond regime. Such a way that you can look at the electronic structure that is moving, so uh, we are trying to move a lot of new ideas from the quantum regime to that. And also, like many of you, I'm always interested in fundamental questions, uh, like not topologies, different uh, different kind of topology, and using them for quantum information processing. Well, uh, as I say, uh, I start with beyond, and the first beyond is is a, a question that I received in a conference uh, when we created this electron vortex beam. Uh, ben, Joe, Werbeck. Uh, 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 many, many other colleagues say they, they initiated this work, including the, the constant in video, and uh, our group as well. Uh, when you create an electrons, uh, free electrons, this free electron can carry orbital momentum, and it has a lot of interesting properties. One of those interesting properties is that it carries angular moments, uh, magnetic moments, unbounded along propagation direction, which is quantized, is in addition to the spin angular momentum. People that they work in the electron microscopy, they appreciate this question because we don't have a spin polarized electron microscope. Well, it's a, it's a lot of challenge. You can have it for a couple of months, but after that, the, the carpet will digress. So when I was hearing a talk about this electron microscopy, uh, one person asked me, well, electron unlike photon has a rest mass. What is happening uh, near to gravitational fields? And I say, well, uh, that's the first thing that I did in my undergraduate level. Uh, you will get uh, a linear potential and you will get uh, any functions. But let's do the calculation. Maybe this angular momentum will give a stabilization situation to, to that. And it turned out now, it's not the case. Then I say, let's go with, with more general situation. When uh, uh, essentially you have a quantum system which is moving in a non-flat geometry which is moving in, uh, let's say, 
a public which is uh, which is the, affected by uh, massive particles. Okay, and uh, this can be a photon, it can be neutrinos, it can be atoms, it can be photons. It's up to you. And then uh, we, we say, well, the first thing that we know that you have a specific geometry for this geometry. Uh, and then, of course, you have uh, your weight equation. I will say, uh, 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 and either you can start with a relativistic regime, which you have a direct equation, and then you can approximate it to lower energy or low energy, or you can go with high energy. Then you will, you will see that in the equations, usually the metric shows up. And and this is written in the lower energy, and what you will see that, uh, well, surprisingly, uh, you have uh, an, an external potential or an effective potential which is showing up in the calculation, which is very surprising. And this is essentially given by rich matrices, which is given by the curvature of space time geometry. And in general, this is time dependent. Well, uh, that was a very, very interesting question, and then. Uh, we say, okay, let's solve it for a specific case when, for example, an atom is falling down into a black hole, radially, directly falling down, and then we, uh, you will get this effective potential to be so complicated. Uh, it can be depending on theta or can be depending on beta, the way that this, the, 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 this atom is falling down to the, uh, to, the, to the black hole. And of course, you have R, and you can define some specific uh, uh, the parameters, and you can look at the transition that happens for the for the atom. And what you will see that surprisingly, the it seems that even due to the curvature of space time, this hydrogen atom will be excited to the third level of excitation, which comes to be very very surprising. Uh, this is um, this is not unrivaled. Okay, this this is beyond it. This is not redshift. It's it's completely new. And uh, we were discussing with some colleagues, and they were really surprised. Is this is not in the Gumbel effect? Pardon? Is not it connected to Gumbel effect? Uh, it's, it's, it's not on effect, no. It's in addition to that. Because, uh, uh, well, Angra is, is, is a general effect that happens for the coordinate, it's a local effect, which is accumulated upon, let's say, falling down to the, okay. to the, to the black hole. And uh, well, uh, working in the in the, in the uh, communication, we say, well, assuming that you have a photon and you encode that information there and sending there, sending from one satellite to another satellite, from let's say Alice to Bob, and you send a specific quantum state, and what happens with the Bob uh, quantum state after moving on the specific geodesic? Uh, in order to do this calculation, it's really tough if you want to do it analytically. Uh, it's over 80, 80 pages including mathematical, if you want to do uh, but that's a backstage uh, calculation. And uh, you should go to one of the geodesies, and then on the geodesies, you will have a new coordinate that we call it Fermi coordinate, and you adjust for the, for the, for the curvature of space and time. And then you say, well, what I will get, essentially, I will get uh, uh, very likely on the bar, I will get the same quantum state with a little bit of perturbation, and you can start to solve the equations. And what you will get that, again, this perturbation, uh, the, the wave function that you have it for that part, essentially, again, is given by the curvature of space and time. You can do the encode in, in the spatial mode, or you can do it in the terminal mode. And surprising, what you will get, that even this effect is significant when you do communication from uh, Earth to the International Space Station. But people, they don't see that because they are not in that range because you have to prepare the pulse in such a way that this effect will be on you. And moreover, we have turbulence, which essentially kills all of those small minor effects. So, and, uh, uh, um, and that's the case, for example, you can send the pulse, which is Gaussian in the temporal mode. And the other side, what you will get, you will get the pulse, uh, which is Gaussian plus another mode, which this mode is given by, not surprising, by the other uh, excited, the, either a higher mode, which is the Henry Gaussian mode in the temporal domain. Well, uh, that was the first thing that I really liked that. And uh, still, we are working on this. We have some new results for the neutrinos oscillation, which is jumping from one mode to another one. This comes from the truncation of the mode, because all those things are based on the plane wave. And when you have a truncation, something will, will change. The, the second puzzle uh, is, is, is a very well-known phenomenon, which is uh, sonar luminescence. I'm sure that most of the people, they have in this room, right? 
And even you can find it in nature, some shrimps, they have it. So essentially, when they want to take the, the, an insect or anything inside of the water, they have a cavitation, and then you will get an, uh, an illumination there. So uh, uh, for those people that they may not be into, uh, familiar with, uh, with the solar luminescence, essentially, you can take, trap a bubble in a liquid, and for example, in a flask like this, and acoustically, you start to vibrate it in such a way that you hit the resonance, and then you are standing right inside, and you can have a bubble that you can trap it inside. And when you trap the bubble, essentially, the bubble sees the gradient in, in time, and uh, the, the dryness of the bubble starts to change, and even it goes to 20 micrometers and sometimes shrinks down to 0 0.01 micrometers. So it changes uh, so quickly in, uh, in, in one, one divided by the frequency that you are eating that, uh, that, uh, that flask. Essentially, for our case, it was about almost 30 kilohertz. So it's to be in the level of a uh, uh, few tens of microseconds. So essentially, the volume change is almost 10 power of 6, 7 in uh, microseconds. That's a huge change in time. And what you will see, surprisingly, you will see a very bright blue light. So this is what you will get, even with your naked eyes. Of course, not with your glasses. If you have glasses, you will have a no problem. But if you take your glasses, you will see it clearly. And it's very bright. And uh, well, uh, one of my friends essentially asked me this question uh, uh, during uh, underwater quantum key distribution that we did in Ottawa and asked me if whether I'm familiar with the solar domestics. So I said, no, I don't know anything about hydrodynamics. Uh, I did a little bit of SEC, but not more than that. But I'm, I claim that I'm a quantum optics person. So I can analyze what, analyze what is happening with the light instead. So just to know why this is so piling, you can look at the black body radiation of this, and you can look at the temperature. And essentially, the temperature associated to this illumination, or let's say uh, uh, sonar luminescence, is about 10 to 6,000 Kelvin. So essentially, almost the surface of the sun. Some people, they call it the star in a jar. Oh. So, and, uh, and no one really knows about it. There are many theories. Many people, they claim that they resolve the problem. But essentially, when you dig down and see uh, the calculations, or they say looking at the, the experiment, doesn't match. So it happens even uh, in Italy. I think some of the friends that were here that I had a very uh, nice conversation with a colleague about that. And then finally, Moti said, you can say, you're all, and this has not been proven by anyone. So, uh, well, uh, as an optics person, I know that, well, uh, we have three kinds of lights. That's the difference in, between classical light and quantum light. One is the light that you will get from the thermal radiations, which is essentially uh, super Poissonian distribution. And we can get laser. And laser is a unique property because uh, it has a Poissonian distribution. And also we have quantum source, which they have uh, sub Poissonian distribution. So these are the three kind of uh, light that essentially involved there. And uh, uh, even during the course of my uh, quantum optics, I emphasize why laser is important. You can get the light from the sun passing through pinholes. You will get spatial potency. You can pass it through a filter, but you will never get the uh, statistic of a laser. So that, that's the huge difference between uh, laser source and even a covalent source. If you add covalency, I mean so. Uh, spatial and also temporal components here. So we, we, we say, okay, let's create the solar luminescence that essentially, since we were not in the field, it took almost two years to build up the solar luminescence. And then uh, we try to analyze this by looking at the uh, solar luminescence light from different angles and looking at different detectors. And what we see, we look at the G2 function, G3 function, and until G7 functions, and uh, the, the correlation of the correlations. But remember, uh, recall that the pulse duration of these is about 100 picoseconds, and we don't have this kind of detectors. Uh, essentially, right now, we are getting one of them, uh, I think, just arrived today, that has a 13 picoseconds uh, jitter time resolution that essentially allows us to also approve that these have anti vanishing or other phenomena. So when we look at it, yes? Quick question. Is this, a, is this black body spectrum that coming off of here? 
It's, it, it, that's what all the, the proofs. It, it's this sound of luminescence that's coming out. So people, they say that all oh, is, they treat it like a classic, like a term of light, and they say that it is like a black body radiation. If you look at the spectrum, it's not really much. It's not really much. And moreover, we have water. Well, uh, water, it kills a lot of wavelengths. You can try with acetone, you can try with other, uh, other solvents as well. But the, the main problem is the water because it is certain transparency window. That's the reason that you will see the blue green uh, wavelengths. If that's the transparency window of, uh, of, uh, of water. For example, if you have a um, uh, 1550, well, the, the, based on Beer's law, the depth penetration depth is about almost 300 microns. So of the 300 microns, it goes to the one divided by E in power. Uh, well, they match in this way. They have some claims. Well, due to the liquid property, you don't have this match. But uh, the temperature but, yeah. but within the within the water transparency window, it looks fairly close to it. Yes, yes, by five. Yeah. And we predicted G two and until G G five and G uh, seven, and it's at the time of zero. And what we find, all of them, they are below zero, uh, below sorry, below one, which is. Very surprising because this is look like a self positive distribution, and even we say, well, you can even fool the statistic uh, by by you can fool the statistic at time of zero. But we have a, a, an equality that we call it Klitschko inequality that you can look at the relation between g n minus one and g n plus one and g n. And when you do this calculation again, this approves that no, this is self positive distribution. And uh, well, we sent the paper, we couldn't come with uh, the H2, and then we hold the paper for another year. We got another camera, which this camera was, was photon number resolving camera. Essentially, it can tell you that you have one photon, zero photon until 20, it's like 200 photons per pulse or per image. And then what we measure essentially, we look at the delta n divided by average of n for single modes. So essentially, we filter it in the, in, the, in, the, in the frequency, we filter it in the special modes as well. And what we realized, well, that's the case for the thermal light. That's the case that we will get it for the sonar luminescence. So that is the, the, the red one. It shows the Poissonian distribution. And clearly, you will see that also for the case of sonar luminescence, still is a sub distribution. We look at several, let's say, uh, examples. So we have created the solar luminescence in 17 different times, let's say 17 different days. And we look at the delta n squared divided by n, and we plot them. And what this is what you will get, it is always below, uh, below one. And this goes to be almost zero to 0 0.5. And that's a G2 function as well. So the conclusion that we had was, well, definitely you have a subconsonian distribution for this kind. So it means that it is a quantum effect. I'm not familiar with any, any classical event that can give you the sub distribution. Ephraim and I, we had a discussion once back in, in Toronto. Uh, he said that he will look into, uh, you had something in mind. So I am looking forward to this, uh, uh, let's say this discussion about that. It really is a puzzle. I don't know the solution. And we are doing the time measurement uh, with these uh, uh, low jitter just to understand if, whether we have anti as well. If that is absolutely going to be uh, to, to, to going to approach one, then I can say that I have an anti bunching with a certain photo statistic uh, uh, for this. So people they may ask me, what is your opinion about the social tax? Uh, well, it goes back to many debates uh, by Schwinger, uh, by um, God, uh, Eberlin, uh, which she formulated uh, the sonar luminescence in terms of the dynamic plasma effect. But well, there were a lot of back and forth reply letters in PRL that well, this is not a true theory. I, I cannot assign anything to this. So that was what uh, I promised you, John. This is beyond. And now I'm going to microscopy. Well, uh, when we go to uh, this is essentially this is supposed to be the beginning of my talk. And my apologies uh, for John, I just cute. So when we go to imaging techniques, well, we have. Uh, Two different ways. You have microscope that either works as a transmission or is working based on the reflection, uh, or can be illumination as well. And uh, if I want to say, well, taking one of them, how can I modify this system? Yeah, how can I improve a microscope? Well, the first thing is that you can change the source to be 
from uh, classical to quantum. You can go, for example, with a Newton state, with a squeeze state, we can with a folk state, essentially, which is the best one. And you can go with linear interaction with the sample or nonlinear interaction, for example, something like a, like a two proton absorption, or you can go with a state microscopy uh, uh, or different approaches, uh, or SU11 interferometry, for example. Or also, you can do some post processing or post selection at the detector stage, which is what I try and uh, uh, I try and three individual people in three different labs they did. So Ifran was one of them, and uh, Alex was another person, and also Luis Sanchez Soto with the team. They were uh, three people that almost at the same time they did uh, these the super resolution techniques. Well, we know that this is what we have to do in order to beat the diffraction limit or the curse, the real uh, really curse. And uh, uh, well, uh, the, uh, what I'm going to talk is only about the two photon case. So it's going to the quantum source. And uh, unlike the people that they give the credit to, uh, I guess for those here, Rosen, I want to uh, bring this to your attention. It's going back to one year before I understand for those here, Rosen, which Karl Popper had uh, a proposal essentially questioning the foundation of quantum mechanics. It was not properly stated. If you read the article, I asked one of my friends to translate it from German to, to me, it's not properly stated, but the idea is there. So it's, it's really the, the dot that uh, uh, triggered people to look into the foundation of quantum mechanics. And what is the Carl Popper experiment? He said, well, assuming that I have a pair of photons or a particle which they are entangled uh, in uh, position momentum, and I'm saying these two pairs to one of them. To, and by the way, this is the version that he modified in 1986. So this is not the original one, which is 1934. So I'm sending one of them to a slit, and I have a lot of the pictures in a power field, and I'm collecting the information there. And the question is that, well, of course, due to the diffraction, what I will see, I will see that the, the detectors on the edges, they will, they will give you a click on the signal side. What is happening with the detector on the idle? If they are correlated, I'm expecting also that the detectors on the, on the edges of the idle also will click. And he raised a, a, a puzzle in a, in a very smart way that, well, uh, challenges the uncertainty principle. Either lo locality should be sacrificed or, or uh, uh, Heisenberg principle should be sacrificed. So uh, indeed, uh, and uh, he even proposed a, a faster than speed of light communication, saying that, well, what I can do, I can, if that is true, that instantaneously on the either side, you will send, uh, you will diffract the photons, then what I can do, I can uh, put the slit and I can remove the slit, then I can send the information as a zero and one piece on that detection. Well, many people, they did the experiment. I, I don't want to name them, uh, uh, including many colleagues, uh, but they were not concluded properly. The, the statements were, they were a bit vague. So with Bob and other colleagues, we tried to do the experiment and just uh, doing it in a proper way. So just, uh, let's say, all everything is, is done in a, in, in a proper format. Uh, well, it started, uh, this is the worst paper, I, I think in terms of the time, uh, article that I have ever written. So we had 47 versions of that. So, and uh, because I have to come his spot. <laughs> so, uh, and then, uh, well, uh, the, the experiment was like this. So we created photon pairs. We sent one of them to uh, a slit and you do a, 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 a measurement essentially in the far field and the other photons, you can look at the other photons uh, 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 with a camera, with an ICT, an intensified CT camera. So essentially you can do the trading measurement there. Yeah. So then uh, we move the slit and we look at the near field and far field. And essentially this is what you will see that uh, uh, this is the joint measurement. In the near field, you will see the slit of course, and if you go to the far field, you will see slowly uh, diffraction happens in a joint vision. Well, this is what we can call it ghost diffraction. I think, uh, well, it may come as a surprise. But the point is that, well, what is happening in the real far field? You go to the far field and you have two different scenarios. You do a joint measurement, conditionally based on the post selection on the, of the, uh, on the, either, uh, on the signal. 
And you can also remove the joint measurement and looking at the idler without being triggered by the, by the signal. And you can look at the distribution of that, and this is exactly what you will see. This is the measurement of these joints, and this is the measurement we, uh, by just cutting the cable. And when you plot them, they are perfectly matched. So I know that it's not a surprise, of course, but uh, the, I, I'm sure that Paul Cover would, would have been happy to see that, well, nothing will happen. Uh, for us, it's very, very clear. So, uh, I will call this really the source, or let's say the triggering, uh, triggering ideas for the, uh, for the ghost imaging. And essentially in this ghost imaging, which many people, they, they have done this, done this with, uh, with classical light and also with, uh, with the quantum sources, you can uh, create a, a photon pair, you can send it to, uh, to an object, you do the collection with a bucket detector, exactly look like what I, what I described. And the other side also, you have a camera which can be tricked, and then what you will see, you will see uh, an image that happens in the coincidence. And uh, there are many different ways of looking at that. And this is the Klitschko picture. Essentially, they say that you can replace the mirror, uh, the, the crystal with a mirror, and this exactly can be done with a classical light. So this is the description. Of course, it does not justify the momentum position correlation. It's a quite a little bit of a uh, proper handling. But uh, uh, it tells a lot of, uh, let's say, first notion of describing the system, but it doesn't go beyond it. Well, uh, when, when we have done this, I had a conversation with uh, Afshalom and Eli, and uh, uh, of course, I knew about the interaction free measurement. And of course, if you look in, into official information, which uh, they did, and uh, uh, you can ask for some other people uh, like Paul with uh, the with, uh, with quantum Zeno effect. You can say that, well, I'm minimizing the number of interactions with the sample. So we say, well, ghost imaging will tell you when you should do the measurement in such a way that you can reduce the noise. Let's combine the interaction free with the ghost imaging in such a way that you will minimize the noise. But on the other side, also, you, you minimize the interaction with the sample. So we combine these two together, and uh, I don't want to go through the interaction-free uh, approach. And that was the setup, essentially. Uh, you create photon pairs, you send one of them to a delay line, giving you enough time to be captured, I mean, the electronics to talk to the camera. Uh, and the other side, you send these to a max lender interferometer, which essentially is not max lender, it's a, it's a sign of interferometer, because we want to make it stabilized. And in one hour, you place the object here and uh, you do the joint measurement and you look at the ICC camera. And these are the few examples. Uh, one of them is uh, for the ghost imaging, the, uh, the approach that people that previously they introduced. And the other one is for interaction free measurement. Apart from the contrast that you will see that black and white they are swapped. So you will see the same image. Good. And this is a movie of that, that you can, you can see that it's really quick. You can see it in, uh, let's say about, uh, 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 this uh, one of my students is moving the UO logo up and down, and you can see it almost in real time that uh, the image is there. You can accumulate it for a longer time and the image will have a better contrast. And uh, uh, the, the interesting point, in addition to the ghost imaging is that this is also sensitive to phase changes, which ghost imaging is not sensitive to the phase, and also to polarization changes. So one of the, the, for example, they had a piece of glass, broken glass, they, they place it there, and you will see that in the ghost imaging, you don't see it, but in the interaction free, you can see it clearly because it's an interferometer. And also uh, one of the students, uh, Hugo, he liked the bomb idea, so he said that, well, I don't want to create a bomb in the laboratory, but let's create with the liquid fuel technology, such a way that when the photon is passing through, the polarization will change. And then he showed that, well, even if you put it in the ghost imaging setup, it will not be detected. But if you do it in the interaction free ghost imaging, that will be detected. Well, wonderful. And now it comes to the, not in the terms of fission information, we didn't look into that, but in terms of what really you are getting. You can play also, assuming that I have a beam, uh, a beam speeder that I can control the reflectivity and the transmittivity. So then, uh, well, uh, you can do ghost imaging, you can do interaction-free ghost imaging, or you can be the 50-50 beam speeder, or you can do it with, uh, with 25-75, uh, and essentially you will see that that one has a better 
contrast with respect to the rest. And then we did a measurement with the variable one. And essentially, uh, the lower one is, uh, well, I'm, uh, you can go with two different scenarios. The two different scenarios are the one is that how many photons really eliminate the sun and fixing this and see what I will get in terms of the image. The other scenario is that no, I'm not looking at the, the number of photons that sample will receive, but I'm looking at the image that will be constructed. And in two different scenarios, you will get signal to nose ratio. Uh, and uh, this is the case. Essentially, if you, uh, if you fix the number of photons, you will improve the signal to noise ratio by 18%. But you can extract the information with uh, uh, the same image with 26.5% less elimination. So you can go with either scenario, it's up to you. So we were really happy with this. And then uh, uh, there was another beautiful idea from, uh, from Al Shalom and Eli, which was non local. Uh, 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 quantum erasure, and is indeed, you, assuming that you create a uh, photon pairs, you send them to, to Marxian interferometer. Uh, people, they know about this, they, they call it Marxian interferometer. And then what happens, assuming that one of them, one of the mirror has a leakage, then of course the quantum state will change to this one. And uh, assuming that there's a polarizing beam speaker, by the way, and uh, while well, you have a leakage on the V reflectivity, uh, V, uh, yes, the V polarization, which is uh, going on these R, and then what happens if you uh, essentially you compensate for this effect by having the same leakage on the other arm and essentially you recover the same quantum state. Now, uh, the point is that can I recover the same quantum state on non-locally? And then the, uh, the answer is yes. I can put the same uh, losses on the other arm and then exactly I will get uh, the same quantum state non-locally. So, and this is what Absalom and Eli, they call it quantum eraser, non-local quantum eraser. And we did experiment, again, uh, to uh, 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 sign like interferometers, and we placed a, a base object inside, and we looked in the, into the cases that, uh, indeed, uh, you place uh, the piece of the glass in one of the either side, and, uh, and then you will see that image. And then we place another phase object in front of that. You entirely uh, lose the, uh, the, the, the image. There is no images in the coincidences, but you can recover the coincidences or image by placing the phase object on the signal side in a non-local fashion. And uh, that was a beautiful one. And we say that maybe if you can do it in a quick fashion, you can do also uh, some sort of uh, non-local compensation of the turbulence in the biological cells or in free space QKD, which is another topic that uh, I don't want to talk about this. And finally, is the last example, is a quantum correlation light microscopy field microscopy is a fresh uh, paper, which indeed, one, uh, one thing that you are fighting for is really looking into the depth of the purpose, and looking at the image and this, this is, a, this is a challenging issue. Of course, you can do it manually because it's, uh, this is what our camera does. And uh, uh, it means that you should have a control not only in the position, but also in the momentum space, in the K vectors, in order to do this. So we say, well, I can do the ghost imaging, but in such a way that the ghost imaging, I have now two different cameras. And these two different cameras, they, are, uh, uh, they have the ability that you can look at the point by point and pixel by pixel, the correlation within 2.5 nanoseconds between each pixel with the others, with any others. And then one of them, we keep it in the near field and the other one, we keep it in the far field and we look at the correlation between the two. And essentially, uh, and of course we have an, um, um, uh, let's say um, a, a program, which essentially does some sort of iteration and does up uh, uh, a digital photography uh, for the ghost imaging. And essentially, this is what you will get with digital refocusing of the image uh, when, you, uh, when you collect both near field and far field and you do the autocorrelation. And uh, this is the image that you get with a normal microscope. And we were extremely happy that indeed uh, it, can be, uh, it can be really in the same feasibility as the, uh, the really uh, the current 
uh, research activity that people did with the, with the conventional microscope. So it has exactly the same resolution. So we were really, really surprised by this. And moreover, you can have a depth of focus easily for a tissue. That was a, 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 one of those uh, paper tissues that you could clean lenses with. And uh, uh, the color coding telling you that the, the tissue is, uh, is in 1.5 uh, micron uh, millimeter before or after. And uh, you can see it, uh, in the in the real time uh, uh, in the ghost imaging fashion uh, uh, the image of uh, of uh, of the of the tissue. Well, uh, with this, I will conclude. Uh, I think that was a movie. I will conclude uh, by thanking all members of my team, uh, including many great researchers uh, and young fellows, which I learned a lot of new things from all of the, all of those individuals. And also many great colleagues that you can see them, some of them here, the yeah, Achilles is here, uh, uh, Avshalom as well, uh, you all, you are there. And I'm looking for an Edo, uh, also he is here. Uh, ben, I think you are, you should be there because it's less than six years that we have eight. Yes, yes Ben also is there. So I, I updated each six years, uh, each year for the last five, six years because I know, I know who should not be the reviewer for my proposal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And uh, uh, my apologies uh, will go beyond the time. Thank you very much. Questions, comments? Do I understand correctly that nobody knows till today the solution to the cerebral luminosity? Yes, uh, yes, there are many theories. Uh, uh, one of them, uh, well, it's, it's mainly based on, they say that even they have a theory about the fusion that happens there, right? And uh, they have a theory, uh, they have so many classical theories. And no, no, but the quantum layer. No, no, no one really knows. Uh, there is only one quantum theory that is a dynamic showing, a showing a, a dynamic has been effect. Which essentially what is happening that we say well is a bubble. We have vacuum and uh, we have certain modes inside. Uh, what is happening that the bonded condition of it, which includes the liquid, the theory that people they have done, it does not include the liquid. So in, uh, they say that well, I have this bubble and this bubble has a certain radius, and this radius is shrinking down so quickly to about 10 power of minus one micrometer. In, uh, so the change in volume is the power of six, seven uh, in 20 microseconds. They say that the vacuum modes, they don't have enough time that they fulfill the, the bonding condition. So the only way that they have it is just uh, will be emitted as a pair from, from the solar lenses. That's the only quantum, quantum mechanical description that they have. Some people, they get rid of including the bonding condition, including the, the liquid. They say that if that is true, the speed should be exceeding the speed of light. So that was the argument that people they had, but they did not really include that even the liquid refractive index is changing according to, to the acoustic wave that you do have it because it's changing. So it's really complicated uh, physics. Do I understand that the vacuum inside is empty or because how how does the vacuum be? Different? Very good question. It can be it can be it can be uh, argon gas usually for the air is argon. You can uh, put neons, even you can change the liquid, you can do it, but essentially for our case is air. Really? It's air, uh, it's air, which is argon. But the light that will come out doesn't depend on what they put in the bubble? Uh, well, it's, it can get brighter. It can get brighter. Now the spectrum is not changing. But the color will be about the same. The frequency. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So when you say That's air, because usually you you pump down these sonoluminescence, so you, so it's a vacuum. You have a liquid in there, but it's it's you know some sort of vacuum. So when you make this bubble, you're basically creating a void in a liquid. And when you say air, do you mean like water molecules are coming out of the or or, or what do you mean by we air? inject it? Oh, you inject, we it inject it. Yes, we inject. You inject it. Yes. air in there. Yeah, so it, it seems that you work with the solar emissions because you know this. So it's, it's very, very tough experiment if you have no idea. You have to cool it down to four degrees. You have to degas it. You have to really use a vacuum to degas it. 
and then you can inject uh, with uh, with the uh, hydrates or anything. You can inject an air there or iron or other gas. And then what do you do? You do you put some uh, you say it? Yes. What? With what three point six? It's twenty three. Uh, depending on the on the flask. Yeah. So our flask is a small size of five centimeter, yeah. and the frequency, the resonant frequency, is about a twenty three kilohertz. And the light that comes out is what well, the the what is the ratio of the frequency that you put in and the frequency that comes so out? So each is twenty three kilohertz. The frequency of yeah. acoustic one. So each twenty three thousand times you will get a pulse. Okay. okay. So, and but this pulse has uh, has uh, uh, if I if I look at the image is about five hundred nanometer. That but is is it has the curve of the of the black body radiation. But uh, it has a blue domain, it has a, even uh, close to 800, 700 something. We have also that domain there. So it has been three, so 10 to the power is the frequency. Oh, uh, yes, of course. I, it's, yes, yes, in this way, yes, it's, it's not the same. It, it's a strange transducer, if I want to call it, acoustic device transducer. Oh, yeah. it, it's a few concepts. I'm going to say about it. So air, air obviously has its own black body radiation. If you, um, it changes if you, you get it hot, and then you, you should have your own black body distribution. Um, so it's really fascinating. I'm very curious. Yeah, I, I don't know. But the only thing that I know I can confirm really is that even I cannot confirm that we do have antibody. I have to wait until next week because the, the that ticket would be the asset to be fabricated. So I can tell you that it's sub Watson distribution. Yes, well. So it's sub Watson distribution. This is the only thing that I can say. I, I don't have any idea about the rest. I cannot say that is uh, is uh, anti bunching or is uh, uh, some other phenomena. We have to look for wait for the autocorrelation to be measured based on the time delay. Okay, it is certainly not uh, not or well, no, and that's the reason that I don't assign the black body radiation to it because the black body radiation is coming from the yeah, so yeah. that's really important. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Small question. So uh, when you said two photon imaging, you meant uh, one signal, one idea. So in the uh, in the ghost imaging, right. so we have we we go with a, a spontaneous parametric down conversion, uh, and you create photon pairs. Which these photon pairs they can be entangled in different degrees of freedom. For all cases, mainly apart from the last experiment, mainly they were entangled in position and uh, and uncorrelated with moment. It's coming from the type one crystal. For the last experiment, it was coming from the type two crystal because we want to do manipulation on different states. Uh, yes, yeah. You mentioned non local erasure. Uh, but if I understand this, the phenomena is coincidence. Yes. So coincidence and non local. So um, you locally do something and non local change. So it's, it's you don't. For me, non local, you do something here and something change here. And uh, what you do, you uh, do something here and some non local thing change. Uh, so, this is, this is not, uh, okay. I so would not yeah, call it these, these were, yeah. There is more to it because Jaffa doing his PhD uh, showed that you can change belts in quality to the special case uh, eraser. So there is a there is a variation of belt in quality really? for the different there are non-local that is if you if you erase something, the erasure in, in an EPR, you make an erasure, the erasure occurs at the other particle, and it's non-local, you can use the bell for it. There is but again, the bell is non-local. Right. So your action is local. If you change something, just like measurement. What? Just like measurement. Measurement is local, but its effect on the other uh, particle is but local. Again, uh, kind of, for me, it's all this interaction degree. 
that it's done in a sense non local. And what's important, oh, yeah. you do something here, you change something here. Yeah. And now you say that you change correlations. Correlations are non local by. by the, um, yeah. So, it's, so you have two photons. One of them is coming to this arc, the other one is coming to this arc. And in the laboratory, they can be a distant. I mean, I mean, and think about the real experiment. I think they were about maybe 60 centimeters far away, two feet, something like that, far, far away. And then uh, this is the power of the, the, the state. So essentially, you have these states, you have this state, and essentially, you have to handle uh, really the, the phases that you have between the difference between the arc. Because the arms also can be different, still you have a front of uh, interference. So you place one of the objects here. Uh, uh, this is what we have done. And then you place a phase mask at the front and the interference is gone. You don't have it. But interference, you are right. It happens on the other side in the ICD camera in the upper, which is based on the joint measurement there. Uh, but if you place the other phase object here, what you will see that the image is recovered there. In the joint vision, of course, in the joint vision. Yeah, yeah this signal should go there. This was my point. So the effect is non, non local. But yes, the effect is non local. So yeah. then, uh, so you cannot say that it's. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a non local point of vision. It's non local of non local. It's yeah. non local action on non local. Non local state, yeah. Which is not as uh, strange if you have non local local actions and uh, change something local. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry, this is kind of a crazy idea. You know, I have faith at the moment, but uh, you're, you're obviously, your photons don't have to be the same color, they could be quite different. Lovely question, yes. Right. And I'm wondering so, let's say your goal was you were trying to imprint a particular phase mask on a uh, short wavelength, form. but your technology is not really up to it. You can't do, can't do fine enough resolution, but you could instead put it on a much longer wavelength one. In which case, there maybe you have much better resolution, and, and also it, it can just be bigger because it's a longer wavelength. And somehow the effect on the shorter wavelength will be as though you had the better resolution technology for the shorter wavelength. Does that a sound a a yes, a beautiful question. Actually, this is a part of a proposal that we have just written. <laughs> <laughs> And it's a problem really for, for myself. You are totally right. So, for example, the, the uh, last week they tried these experiments going to 1550 and going to almost about, if I'm not mistaken, I get 600 close to 600 watts. So, and now the question is that I don't have a 1515 camera, but I am a very good detector there. And I have a very good camera here in that wavelength. I can place the object at the front of these and I can get the image there. And now the question is that what is the resolution? Is the resolution of this or the resolution of that? Uh, I have not done the calculation, but I strongly believe that the resolution is dictated by the pump. You will get a convolution of this. That's that's the physics that I, I believe that is dictating, but you will definitely get a better resolution than this, but uh, it will be it will be dictated by the pump. I uh, that's my intuition, but I will definitely keep you posted about that. No more questions or comments. Thank you.